All right, hi everybody, I'm Tim. And I'm Michael. And we want to welcome you to TMI. That's the Tim and Michael Information Show. That's right, we're here to talk about art and answer a few of the questions you may have been wondering. Because again, we're not professionals yet. But we'll get there. And we're on our way and we want you to get there too. Mm -hmm. So come along for the ride. Today we're talking about... We are talking about, well, really just Art exploration. Oh, loose and loosening up. Isn't yes. That today's okay. Loose. Right. Okay. Um, so a lot of things that I see a lot of people needing to do is to just not do this. Right. Come, you just oh, lo loosen up and just uh, this. This is all about letting yourself create without any sort of hindrance and without a struggle. It shouldn't be an uphill battle. It should be a nice joy ride. Kind of joy ride. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, probably a better way to put it is, and I think this is what you're trying to say. Yeah. Is, yeah. To be expressive, not controlling. Mm -hmm. An expressive line is much more artistic than a very tight, controlled straight line or curved line, whatever you're doing. Um, I'm going to go to the sketchbook, too, to talk about a little about Good. the sketchbook, about what that is Good. supposed to be. And as we were talking about last fall in classes, um, there's a difference between your sketchbook and your portfolio book. True story. Now, I'm guilty of this. When I was a kid, I had a sketchbook that I would always draw and I would also get the little sleeves and put stuff in there and make my own sketchbook and show it to the family so they could get excited about what I was doing and like, oh, look at what Michael's done. But the sketchbook really is for your sketches and ideas. And I see a lot of people who have sketchbooks that are trying to make them portfolio books. And you're hindering yourself because a sketchbook should be for all of your loose ideas and your loose doodles. Absolutely. Again, that is how you loosen up by getting a lot of really bad ideas out there and building up to a great idea. And it's that's, all part of the design process. Sometimes you see that little thing, and nowadays we're in a great little digital age where we can actually find that little piece. I'm going to take it to the scanner. I'm going to blow it up. I'm going to use my tracing paper. I'm going to go over that. That's another thing we should talk about in a later episode, really tracing should. papers and materials mm -hmm. and all that sort of stuff. In Man, time. Many of you may know what we're talking about, but for those of you who don't, we'll catch you up later. Um, also, we're, I want to introduce a nice little exercise. Please do. So we're going to go to draw cam, and then you guys are going to get to see this little exercise that's brought to you by Kirk. And welcome to our very first draw cam. Um, what I'm going to show you here is a little exercise, an assignment actually, that I picked up. Thank you, Kirk Severson, for giving this to us. And uh, it should help you with loosening up. I know it definitely helped me. I also recommend taking Kirk's cartooning class. Um, what we're going to do, and again, normally I uh, draw with a pencil or my pen, but just so you guys can see and it can all register until we get the fancy schmancy equipment that can pick up all the fine little details, is uh, I'm going to be using this marks a lot. And I actually used uh, this type of marker when I was a baby <laughs> and I was drawing and just kind of held it like that and that's why I hold my pencil uh, and pen's weird. But anyway, so, so uh, the... The thing we're going to do is elephants, and I've already started to draw 10 for you. Uh, 10 elephants in 30 seconds or less, and then 5 elephants in 60 seconds or less. Then we get to do 5 elephants in 1 to 5 minutes, and then it's 1 elephant in 30 minutes or more. Uh, what I'm going to do is I have a timer off to the side here, and I'm just going to draw 10 elephants. And 30 seconds on the clock. Let me get this guy ready and go. And uh, I'm actually at 27 seconds, and I'm stopping it. So, uh, what you were looking at right now are 10 elephants. And again, they don't really look like anything, and that's the point. This is less about trying to get in all of those details. If you've ever been drawing, and you've been trying to get things just right, and trying to fight, you need to loosen up. Uh, the whole point of this is that you said, oh, okay, I'm just going to do 10 elephants. They shouldn't look like anything. So now that I've done this for you, what I'm actually going to show you are the elephants that I did in my actual assignment. So here are the 10 elephants that I did in the 30 seconds or less. 
And then as you move on to the next page, you'll see that I have five elephants in 60 seconds or less. And you can see I got a bit more time to do that, but I was trying, and even then, this was when I was trying to be more controlled and actually give detail. Again, that's not what it's about. It's just about getting it done. Because then you find when you get to do um, the five elephants in one to five minutes, it actually works out a lot better for you because you realize how much time you have. So by the time you get to that last elephant, that last elephant, and this is Bumpkin, the elephant that I did, I, I had so much time that I actually started giving it some color and you know shades and value, basically. Um, but again, it all has to start here until you realize that you have more time and you just have to loosen up do this exercise again always have your references we started with elephants and that's what Kirk gave us I also recommend that you try other animals uh, but make sure you always have your references handy so for now that is our first draw cam and again we hope and encourage you guys to try these out back to me and Tim now we're going to talk a little about drawing mileage and making sure that you have them. This comes from Phil Dimitriadis. Uh, I hired him to, I heard. <laughs> it got away from you there, didn't it? <laughs> a little bit, did. <laughs> I heard Phil talk once about how he has a clear plastic jar and for all of his, um, you know, uh, pencils and everything that he gets down, he just puts them in there and fills them up. And he's got one jar filled up that took him several years to fill. Now he started a new one. Um, Tim was uh, talking to me about how sometimes it's important uh, not sometimes, all the time. It's important yeah. to do work outside of either your, let's say you're contracted to do something mm -hmm. and then that's the work you have to do, or let's say you're in a class and, oh, this is my assignment. It's important to do those, but it's also important to just draw outside of that for you and for your drawing mileage. It really is. Um, you know, if you're like me and you're a concept designer, you probably do a lot of imaginary work, stuff that comes out of your head. Maybe you're doing a dragon or a flying car or what have you, and you think, oh, well, you know, I can just draw this out of my head. There's no reference for this in the real world. I don't have to go find this. I can just do it. It'll be okay. Well, not so much. You know, really, to make that imaginary thing really great, you want to find sort of a counterpart in the real world and use that as a sort of makeshift reference. You know, even if there's not really a flying car out there, you know, there are flying machines out there, there are cars out there, and you want to get to know both of them so you can make that flying car look as, not plausible or believable, but as, oh, what's, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, you just want it to, you want it to feel real. Yeah. There's certain things that we are taught, I think, that, that you learn, and, and we don't realize this, but we're all masters in light, believe it or yes. not. Because when something is done wrong in, in, a, in a piece of composition, uh, there's something in you that inherently says no. <laughs> that's no. Mm, yeah, you, that's messed, not you messed up. And it is like back in the '30s when we used to do horror movies that uh -huh. did all of that downlighting because light comes from the top and goes to the bottom. That is natural light. It is mm -hmm. always that way. It's very rare in life or nature that we see light emanating from the bottom and casting up. And it's terrifying. Yeah. So when it you happens. see, because because you because your your brain says that's not right. And so when you, when you see Dracula, when you see Frankenstein, then you see that shadow, it's like, oh. So I think the same thing with the cars and everything. Even though um, it's from your mind, there are certain rules that we've learned to say, oh, that's correct, or, or that is not correct. Um, so references are important. Yeah. I think it's even more clear with the dragon example because, no, we don't have dragons, as far as we know. Um, but we do have lizards, and we have had dinosaurs, and really dragons are just a distant cousin of that. So if you want to do a dragon right, you need to get familiar with lizard anatomy, dinosaur anatomy, depending on the size and shape of your dragon. Getting a lizard anatomy right, not easy to do by the way, but getting it right means your dragon is going to feel right. Because so I think Michael hit it, hit the nail right on the head a minute ago with his lighting example. We don't always know why things don't look right, but if they look off, people know, hands down. They can feel it. And, the, and, and, and the, another thing is to know enough of it, is to know mm. enough of something, because you can spend years becoming a master of anything, I believe, get a master's degree in 10 different subjects, and yes. learn all about this, and, but, but, but for the sake of um, not hindering yourself and also loosening mm. up, 
Just focusing on the things that you know are good enough to make it right. So if you're doing costuming for sure. a video game or something and it's set in the 1100s, the, the Crusades, then do a research on the Crusades. You don't need to have a master's degree in the Crusades. It would help. Uh, and it might have, it'd be good to have one of those people on board with you, but again, knowing enough of it. Here's a tip. Uh, let's say you are doing the Crusades. Okay. You know, a really great place to start if you want to research on that is actually kids' books. You know, get a kids' book on the Crusade, maybe a picture book, and you can flip through, and you can read through it pretty quickly, and you'll get a nice overview of the Cru Crusades, and you can figure out, gosh, what do I like? What don't I like? What's pertinent to my project here? And that way, once you've got some more in-depth subject matter to work with, you can go look into those specific facets instead of, you know, deciding you're going to be the master of the Crusades and check <laughs> out that big, thick book, the extensive Crusades history, and, you know, trying to master it when you don't really need to master the whole thing. Kids' books, great place to start. And you also mentioned in kids' books, I think it's also important to say there's a lot of people that say, well, I don't want to be influenced by too many other things. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm going to second nothing that. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah, I'm going <laughs> to say there is nothing wrong by doing your research, as it were, and mm -hmm. finding out everyone else's take on something because right. you're only going to have a lot more tools in your pocket. Now, I know this will probably happen a lot on TMI, as you guys are watching, is we'll start with a subject and we may segue and veer. It's kind of free and flow random. thought. Um, so we started off as we're coming to the end of this episode. We started off with loosening up and we showed you the little short of uh, the exercise. Um, any other last things we want to add on just kind of loosening and just doing things? You know, I think really to sort of catalyze or crystallize what we've talked about earlier with the importance of getting the reference. Uh, don't let the fact that it's imaginary um, be an excuse to just, you know, BS it, you know. You don't say, oh, well, I know it looks kind of funny, but it's not real, so it's okay. You know, really anything imaginary is a caricature of, again, real life. You know, you know those funny pictures yeah. you see at like the beach, the caricatures where somebody's head is way out of proportion or they're really skinny or they got the big eyes. <laughs> you know, yes it looks very different from the actual person, but at the same time the essence, and that's one of my favorite words, the essence, the core of it is there. Um, and character artists have the best reference because do. you are sitting right there. <laughs> I mean that's that's all the reference they need. They really do. They take the, you know, they take what's actually there and they exaggerate it. And really that's what imagination is, exaggerating reality. So yes, it is important to get that reference. Also, I think I wanted to say something about just drawing shapes as you were starting. Um, oh yeah, uh, I remember getting into a sewing class mm -hmm. and costuming for theater and um, we made aprons, was the very first thing, but Mela, Mela Hoyt Hayden said, how many times have you done it? And that's another thing I like to add. How many times have you done yes. it? Don't feel bad if you aren't feeling, oh, I'm not as loose as I could be, or I'm not as great as it could be. You haven't done it enough, and that is okay. Just how many times have you done it? Just like driving or anything else. That'll bring us to the end of this episode, I, I think. think so. Well, thank that's a good place to stop. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'm Tim. And I'm Michael. And this has been TMI. And remember, if you're someone that you really, really like out there, an artist that you're looking up to, I'm not as good as that person, but I can try. Because <laughs> aren't we just trying? We're trying darn hard. And eventually, <laughs> we're slowly going to get there. All right. Thanks so much, everybody. Have a good one.